Okay, um, uh, this video is to demonstrate or introduction to our first homework assignment. Um, our first homework assignment is really a warm up. You don't really have to write a single line of program, but you download the, the source code from our uh, project server and you use tool like a GCC make file or shell command, or you need to learn, for example, uh, uh, doing web or SFTP or SSH to be able to get the program, compile the program to run. So in some sense that this program is try to refresh you about what you learned from ECF36A and, and try to do something which is important to build up for the later for ECF36B. So this homework particularly is a concept related to what we call inter-process communication, or more specifically, we usually call it Unix network programming. It's essentially saying that you have a two different program. How can these two programs communicate with each other remotely? So one program may be in Europe, one program may be in Asia, and these two programs, they can communicate, which is you can think about this capability is so important for today's internet environment, for mobility, and that is a basic. You, if you can do that, you can do a lot of things, uh, real world. Okay, and so this, this work by itself is communication using uh, Unix network programming, but this is a communication also pushed to the communication in the object-oriented sense. So it's a networking, but it's object-oriented networking means that you're having two objects are communicating with each other. And the communication itself is an object being transferred from one process to the other one. Okay, so that's kind of the high-level concept I hope you will experience. And uh, uh, I will show you a video uh, after this. You will see how I actually run that program. The, the, the program is kind of using a uh, text terminal, but you have to use a lot of imagination to see that how interesting this will be. And I just want to tell you that this is a basic building block for the subsequent uh, assignment. Talking about that, I just want to tell you first about uh, this, um, let me go this. This is about um, inter-process communication. So as I mentioned, we have two processes. And process B, as I show on the slide, is a server. It's our server, and I already, uh, from Canvas, I download all your record. So what is your record? Your record include uh, your name, your temporary ID, your student ID, your user ID in the ucdavis.edu, and also which session you are, and about other uh, attribute, which I will discuss, show you later. So essentially what you have is that on the server, I already download this. I keep it very uh, safely about your record. I'm very careful, make sure that nobody can grab that. So you're going to run this program called process A, which is I call the client. And the client program is going to send a message. That message contains exactly one piece of information, your student ID. So when you send that student ID to the process B, which is a server, there are two outcomes. One outcome is, I'm sorry, I couldn't find your student ID, which is a good thing because you know, oh, you thought you're in the class, but according to Canvas, you're not. So at that time, you better come talk to me if you see a, uh, like a ID not found in, in this inter-process communication scenario. And then we try to fix that uh, with registration, make sure you are in the class. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Second kind of outcome is, that, okay, I match your student ID in our database. Now I'm actually going to transfer in my database what I have for you. And that including your name, your student ID, and your user ID, and other information. And I think that sometimes uh, this information basically a few purpose. Number one, to tell you what I have on my database. Number two, if there is any error that you will know that, that this data is not there. Okay, so, so this is a very simple scenario for you to see that how uh, information can be transferred. And this 
basic capability will build、uh, very deep into the later homework as well. Okay, so this is this is essentially what we transfer back to you about your ID and your name. Those are the first example of modeling each of you as an object. So an object called student, which is a class student, and the student will include those information. And we are going to see that you can apply object-oriented paradigm to actually define other attributes, and such that this class student will be actually very useful. Okay. So the last part before I show you the、um, the, the the demo session, I just want to give you a sense about. All the assignment that we're going to have you go through this quarter, we have right now about seven or eight different assignment already being planned. And step by step, you can see that I listed here on the slide.、Uh, the first one is interprocess communication. It's just how two objects they can communicate with each other. And the second one, I'm actually introduce a concept called virtual ID assignment. So I don't want you to use your student ID to do any kind of communication because that ID, just like your social security number, is very precious. I just want to have that one time. But subsequently, we're going to use something else to protect your privacy or confidentiality. But in that process, I'm going to show you how. Uh, JSON is going to play a key role in supporting this kind of communication.、Uh, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. How do you do encoding and decoding? Those things we're going to take care of that in the second homework assignment. And the third homework assignment, we're going to do some kind of object conversion.、It、means that the object in one world, which is a C plus plus world, it could be. Going back and forth with JSON world because JSON is another way of describing an object, while C plus plus provide a different style and how they can、uh, interoperable with each other. And that capability is very useful. And fourth assignment is going to be software testing. And the fifth assignment is going to be okay. It's not just object. We model everything as object, but objects are related to each other. So we're going to talk about how to car carry out the relationship among the object. So that's the fifth homework assignment. And number six is that those objects are going to send or even share content with each other. And、uh, number eight, we're going to go through some advanced topic. So, so each of the subsequent topic after the the first one, the red one,、um, is going to depending on your success in in get hold of the first homework assignment. I do want to say that the. Strict requirement for homework assignment number one is very simple. You just need to type a make. You just need to run the program, provide the right parameter,、um, and you need to know a few Unix command like a if config, which you find out the IP address of of one of the machine. And so that is usage part about the homework assignment number one. That part I don't think is going to be. Um, um, uh, take you a lot of time, but if you feel you stuck somewhere, you need to get help. I mean, the first line of help you should get is instructor or TA, and we try to get you through that as soon as possible. But the second thing, which I also want you to spend some time in the first assignment, is I really want you to spend some time to try to understand the C code. So by the way, the first homework assignment you will receive two C code. One is server dot C, one is client dot C. I'm going to、uh, send you both codes. You know, even though you're just running from the client side, you actually see what is the server part of the source code, how it works. What is a Unix network programming? And and the thing is that I hope you spend some time to to understand that. And also in one of the class when you Come to the um, um, the Zoom session. We can actually go through line by line the code, give you some structure understanding. Because to understand somebody else's code is as important as for yourself to write the code、uh, correctly. Okay,、um, so that's my introduction to homework assignment number one. So now we're going to see the the real demo on screen. So okay, 
so this is the um, the demo session about you can see that right now I provide you uh, a few files and make file I make clean so I can clean all the file and the first thing I'm going to um, um, to make sure that you remember the make file the rule you can take a look uh, I already have a two source code two executable and also the clean room uh, the clean rule that you can uh, get rid of the stuff okay all right so you make and then you get two executable um, and then we're going to run you can see that uh, sorry I'm going to run this program in two separate directory that this is a server directory okay so that executable is ECS uh, 36b you can see that the server uh, executable needs uh, four parameters server name port number uh, master file and log file so I mean I will just call the server name to be anything okay sorry it has to be um, the server name is I'm going to say uh, Felix laptop which means that this machine this software is actually running server is running from my laptop and then I used our zip code um, as the port number 95616 and then uh, the master file is ECF 36b master that's the file I got it from canvas and also I save everything the log so I'm actually running this program on my local machine so this isn't running on my local machine uh, and then now I'm going to another window I'm going to run my client program and again I just tell you that the client program takes uh, three parameters the first one is IP address of the server oh, that's important I have to know where is the internet address I need to use and there's a port number the third one is a SID is a student ID okay so client remember I said you just need to submit the student ID but you have to know where's the IP address so how do you know the IP address use a command I just type called if config minus a and this this part you need to learn a little bit just carefully look at en uh, zero that is a network interface here and you see there is an inet address is 192.168.1.8 that is the IP address of this machine I'm using I'm doing the demo and so therefore when I try to connect uh, I, the IP address I just type in that string uh, is called 192.168.1.8 and the port number again is the zip code 95616 and then um, okay I have 95616 here just double check I didn't type the wrong thing and then the student ID I actually have a fake ID which is one two three four five six seven eight nine I don't want to put your so you can see that when I submit over there I build a record which is the fake ID for Felix Wu for me and the return address now is 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 actually successful I found this record Felix Wu student ID is this and then UID SFWU with a session zero zero has a timestamp but it also has another one is IP address which is the address I'm using okay the IP address and that's that's what we got okay I can change that to two uh, that's another fake uh, ID I put it there for the purpose of demo that's actually Jerry uh, Jerry Wang uh, his record that's our first TA uh, uh, now I change to three you will see that's that's Joseph that's uh, our second TA's uh, record and then I change to four oh that's that's John that's uh, another fake ID so I basically have a record for uh, all three TA myself to just to show you okay this one is interesting I enter five two three four five seven eight nine and that is not the record which is says ID not found I mentioned to you you have to uh, check whether uh, your ID has been recorded in our database and the IP address is from that okay so that's you can see that and also I want to tell you that this is actually the server side the server side we actually kept all this information in our log so we know uh what and when did what okay you look at the log now you can see that this is the request we receive when we receive it what from which IP address we receive that okay so that that's the um 
the program that just tell you how you can do it. You can actually do it on your own machine with two. But now what I'm doing is I'm actually going to go to a remote server, which is a server you're going to test it against uh, from your machine. This is mach this server is called Cyrus cs.ucdavis.edu and over there again I have this ECS36B uh, folder and the homework one folder I have exactly the same file I'm going to just clean it again using make clean rule and then just try to make it I mean this is exactly identical uh, software okay All right, I removed the log file as well. I, will, I just basically get rid of all the files, but I do keep that ECF36B master. That's the database for all our students and plus those four fake accounts, all right? All right, I'm going to uh, make, I'm gonna make, now you see I uh, produce as executable, but I also want to find the IP address because the server now is a different IP address. So. Here, look at ETH0, Ethernet, uh, Ethernet 1, sorry, ETH1. And you see that that's the IP address, which is 169.237.6.102. That is the IP address that the client program need to do. Okay, but okay, again, I'm going to run the server. So just remind you that the server needs to take a full parameter. So now I call the server, I just call it Cyrus because that's the name of the machine. Um, and the poor number is 95616. I'm still using the same poor number. I just, you can, by the way, you can define anything. And then the master file, which is the student record and the log. Okay, I'm running the server, exactly the same thing happened, but this is, this time is on remote. Okay, so now we're going to run this program from uh, the client side, from my machine. Okay, so instead of have that 192 address, now you see I changed that address to 169.237.6.102. And uh, now because it was not found, I mean, if you look at the result, everything here I run from the local and remote, I got exactly the same result. And you can test it out. Okay, this one is Joseph. And this one is for Jerry. And this one is for Felix. Okay, so now you can uh, saw this, uh, very interesting. And you, we go to the server side, and uh, this is actually recorded in uh, Cyrus. And if you host name, I just want to verify that this is actually on Cyrus. And we look at, this is interesting. You, you see that the IP address we record is 76.20.47.100. And if you look at earlier when we uh, run the program on local machine, the IP address is somewhat different. And this is something which we will spend some time to, to explain. This is set especially related to homework assignment number two. Okay, uh, I hope you have some um, high-level picture about what is the homework assignment number one. Okay, thank you.